Hello, I'm Eric de Marais. I have been writing now seriously for almost a decade. Not very seriously for, I have no idea. Um, I have five books published with Renaissance and uh, this book came around because every year I challenge myself to not plan a story and write a different part of it every month. So it's a serial story in the vein of the old ones by, um, uh, hold on, I, I've already forgotten everything I ever remembered. A little nervous, sorry. Um, old style newspaper serial stories. And I try to challenge myself by throwing cliffhangers that I have no idea how to solve. So I took my first five years that started about eight years ago, put them together in a book and put short stories in between each that sort of glued them together where one of the main characters from my series, the Elizabeth Investigate series, is talking to the main character of those books. So because I didn't have a character to introduce in the first one of them, he's talking to um, um, John Watson from the Sherlock Holmes books. So I'm going to read the first snippet of the story where Jackie from the Elizabeth Investigate books speaks with John Watson. This is set before my series. So if you haven't read it, you will not be lost, I hope. It was early morning and the cafe was filled with people waiting for their orders. Standing in haphazard lines, they ran the gamut from grumpy to perky, but most looked tired. They all seemed like they wanted to be in a hurry and resented having to stand still. The August warmth was immediately negated by the powerful air conditioner. The smell of warm, moist grass was replaced by the pungent smell of coffee. Despite the 20 or so people in the cafe, only one of its half dozen tables was occupied. A young boy sat alone at the table in the corner. He was small, dark skinned, and had a playful look in his eye. He was reading A Study in Scarlet by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. You wanted to speak to me, young Master Jackson. The British accent will come and go, don't worry. The man sat next to the boy. His Victorian suit was perfectly in place and his cane was carved with the head of a hound. His thick mustache barely moved as he spoke. Please call me Jackie, the boy stopped and looked at the man. I need advice. I think you have the wrong man. If you want advice, you should speak to with my partner. He's the clever one. Just don't tell him I said so or he'll be insufferable. The boy smiled. That's my problem. I'm starting high school next week and I'm not sure how to do... He trailed off while gesturing with his hands. The man, who was used to this form of thinking, waited. Finally, the boy continued. I don't know how to do what you do. I only write his stories, my boy. That's not true and we both know it. You guide, support, inspire, and most importantly, help. I don't know what I can do to help her. The man sat back in his chair and stroked his mustache in an attempt to hide his smile. Ah, this is about love. Shaking his head, Jackie gave the other man a pointed look. No, I, I mean, I do love her, but not romantically. I, I think she's brilliant and my homes, but I worry all I can do is help her ta by tagging along. I'm worried I'll be a liability. So you're worried you can't live up to her brilliance? That you aren't enough to help her? Watson asked, tapping a, the, uh, a wooden stir stick to his mouth. When Jackie nodded, Watson said, if she is like Holmes, you can never fully understand her or equal her intelligence. Oh, Jackie looked into his hot chocolate and watched the flecks of golden cinnamon dance inside the brown liquid. But she doesn't need an equal. She needs a friend and a partner, someone to tell her her story and to remind her what she's capable of when she hits a wall. The two sat in silence. After what felt like a long time, Jackie said, so I don't have to match her? I just need to be myself and support her? Absolutely. That's all we can do with any of our friends or family. Sighing, Jackie asked, but how do I make sure to guide her the way you do? The man laughed and shook his head. I don't guide Holmes. I support and occasionally remind him what he's doing. But one doesn't guide a bloodhound. One holds on and hopes for the best. The image of Elizabeth, his friend, in full body harness, pulling him around made him laugh aloud. A few patrons looked his way, and one of the baristas smiled at him. 
He took a sip of his cocoa and looked up at Watson. He was the definition of confidence and even had a twinkle in his eye. I hope I can find your confidence, Jackie said. Mine is born of knowing my limits and myself. Having a brilliant detective as my best friend doesn't hurt. I certainly feel like she'd save me if I needed it. I'm being silly. Yours found murderers, lost people, thieves, and spies. What kind of trouble could Elizabeth get into in high school? Oh, you'd be surprised, my boy. The greatest mysteries and adventures are born from the everyday mundane. It's always the days that seem the most normal that Holmes finds the most trouble. The man stood up and said, Good luck, my boy. Let me know if you ever need more advice. With that, he walked away, literally fading into the crowd. Jackie held the book a little longer before continuing to read. The coffee shop remained as it was, its namesake, a dancing goat painted on the walls, impatient people waiting in line, and the smell of coffee, a smell indelibly linked in Jackie's mind to reading and getting away from everything for a little bit of time. And that's it. <laughs>